Hello everybody, it is I, me, with the second half of the video that was promised yesterday, aka beating the ever-loving hell out of Madhouse Mike. Do enjoy! Alright, so I consulted with my advisor. We are going to resume. I am... not exactly happy as uh, this happened and Atlas is kind of oofed and Madhouse is being a dick. But let's see, can I survive this with my limited knowledge on cryptids? You, you know, <clears throat> yeah. you plop back down in the cushioned office chair and hold and fold your arms. Now is your chance to really get let your not shine. This is for the fans. Couldn't have said it better myself, fly boy. Now let's get started with some fake or folklore. This is my evil voice. Question one. Slight cited in 19... 1971. Missouri Monster Momo was known to scare off its actors with what? Uh... Um... This, by throwing... Uh, the heavy logs at the rocks and stuff to protect themselves. Well, that's definitely an answer. Drum roll time! Madhouse turns on the drum roll FXX. Bzzz. Wrong. The correct answer was a bad smell. Oh, too bad. Looks like you have to lose some life. <coughs> you flinch in a sudden jolt of pain, aching through your body. <coughs> Ow. Owie. It'll only get harder from here, sugar. In fact, every question you get wrong will slightly increase the vitality we slap from you. Sorry, rules are rules. You're making up the rules. Someone's gotta make them. Who else makes them? Me? No, me. Question two. An old elephant, a cryptid terrorizing Logan Canyon in 1923. What was the creature? A big bear, a Sasquatch, or a lost gray? I don't know any of these, so I'm going to have to pray. It's just, uh... Okay. Logan Canyon. Okay, so if I fail this, I am going to just cut out a segment of the video and use the internet to do it, because I don't want you guys to suffer through it. But, uh... Yeah. Um... Big Bear. Was, uh, was air from a big bear? You're just guessing at this point. How daring! Let's see how that turns out for you. Manus gestures to Atlas, who's speaking like a ragdoll. Correct! Oh, thank Christ. Huh, I certainly wasn't expecting that. Good on you, Bob. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, um, thanks. Next question. Oh, this is gonna be a good one. I can't tell the difference. Uh, they all get the same voice. They're all insane. Question three. Yes, sir. Ruster Giant, sighted in 1965, crushed the hood of whose car? Okay, so it can't be George Washington as he's. Harold. Harold sounds about right. That's like a normal name. Yeah, you totally fell for it. The Ruster Giant doesn't exist. Bzz. Wrong, but. Maddie, you totally cheated. So what? It's my game, my show, and my rules. Sorry about this. Suddenly, you get gut punch, this time kneeling over from an invisible force, stabbing your stomach. Yeah, sit through. This game is supposed to be fun. I think we have time for one last question, as in code by the folks at home. Mike leans into his microphone and his voice to a low growl. Do you know what happens to such changes? Lifting his hands slightly, Mike's hat, white tipped eyes lock onto your fearful gaze. I lose. You never need to remove that. A chill runs down your spine as you hold your ground. So, you've made it. I'll make the rules! It's my show, my game, my rules! The ghost suddenly blinks out, only to reappear behind Atlas. You're just another fake fan. 
Oh no. You're just another fake fan. Shrinking down, Mike begins to melt Atlas and with Atlas in the two form, much larger, scary creature. Oh no. Oh no. Don't you know who I am? I'm a goddamn urban legend. And I'm done wasting my eternity in this place. I don't don't I deserve to be free? <laughs> Somehow, even in death, I'm still working all day, every night, all the time, forever, forever. Well, I'm done with lies, fakers, and those goddamn ghost hunters. None of them ever cared about the real me. Never. I quit. No more graveyard shifts, no more management, no more fake fans. A pair looks down, the pair looks down at their hands and wiggles each finger. Do you know what happens to fake fans? The cryptid laughs. Taking a wobbly step forward. I get their souls. <laughs> You're a freaking liar. Alice staggers forwards and kicks the stallions up through the air, narrowly missing you. You roll off your chair into the floor without realizing it. You spin for the door in an effort to simply stay alive. Atlas, no. What what have you done, Madhouse? No. Atlas, what about our Friday movie night? Atlas can't hear you, my friends. You are going to watch the extended edition of that one fantasy trilogy with the director commentary. You fumble with the doorknob trying to get it open. The Mothman goes rigid and is intent to flick forward. Huh? Atlas legs Dirk off to one side, almost toppling the Mothman over. This is not good. Oh, I feel bad for you, Alice. Atlas, you've been put through this pain. Oh, stop it! He takes another step, but trips over over nothing. The two diver, drivers fighting for the same steering wheel. Grrr. Jamie, help Atlas! He's been consumed by the ghost. The Jersey Devil clambers into the room, confused. Oh, okay. They look around only to watch the possessed Mothman jerk and jitter around towards the duo, muttering and crawling in his own feathers. That is not Atlas. Oh, no. 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 Yes. Yes. The luck of the die. D don't just stand there. You dash past the Jersey Devil and successfully duck behind them for a semblance of protection. Without hesitation, Jamie snaps their fingers and blue interior flames. In Inferno, I can't speak. Inferno flames suddenly swallows the Mothman in blue flames. Nice. What? I'm gonna ignore that. Alright, I also live with people, so if I ever just randomly go, what's in the background? That's just me talking to people, don't worry about it. Jamie leaps into action, dropping into a couch before scooping up their fond friend. Are you hurt, Tina? Some mild healing spells? Oh no. So I myself am hurt, right? But I don't care. Atlas. I'm more concerned about Atlas. Screw myself. Set him on fire. You have got to be joking. My magic is more complex than the fire. Jimmy looks a little nervous at the human's words. Shifting their stance, Jamie steps forward and inhales a gout of steam from their jaws. Ready to squash this pest, oh no. The Mothman struggles to, f to his feet, flicking off, fl flicking off bits of flames as he shakes his head and looks up. I cannot speak. Why must you hurt me? Jamie's taken aback, stirred by the Mothman's voice. Oh no. Atlas, I am sorry. I would never hurt you. Atlas bursts up laughing, but it's not Atlas's voice at all. Yeah. <laughs> you totally fell for it. The Mothman drags his talents across the wall, slowly lumbering towards his friends. Shit. You really think he'd believe that, Jamie? Atlas is terrified of you. Do not say that. That's not true. 
Jamie looks out of the floor and buries their face in their hands. Oh, you think I'm lying? Then ask him yourself. Are you afraid of me? Jamie holds their face in their hands, refusing to look at the Mothman before them. Oh, God. You know... Yeah, this this would have been a good part two, but uh, here we are. Oh, this isn't good. I can't do that. Oh, my voice. That's because you're out of know the answer. <laughs> Atlas Wing suddenly drop to his sides and his knees, knees buckle. Standing beside the oh, God. Sorry, I had stretch. That, that, that was a good stretch. I needed that. Yeah, let me rephrase that. Alice Wayne suddenly dropped to his sides and his knees buckled, seeing the Mothman falling flat on his face. Yes, you could cut through this energy with a knife. Thanks for the vibe, bad vibes, bud. It's just enough to finally make my demonic debut. The fuck? Peeling out of his vessel's crumpled form, the fam scoops his head off and the mothman's off the mothman's head, having sapped the energy from his host, and with the tension in the air, Madass seems much larger than before. As he daintily puts on his red cap, spine and spout from Mike's back, and his curled horns coil. The crown of the phantom's head. This is not good. Jamie takes a sharp breath. Oh no. You need to run. Wait, what about Atlas? Jamie, what do you- Jamie shoves you aside and charges Madhouse, taking a heavy swing at the demon. Her eyes wild with fury. Oh god. Don't you have some wicked souls to torment? Ducking under Jamie's punch, Madhouse rams the devil. With his curled horns. This is not going good. Go to hell. Shut up! Absolutely fuming. Now. I cannot speak. Absolutely fuming now. Jamie grabs Madhouse horns and swings him up and over their head in a suplex. Jamie's now very scary. Squeezing your eyes shut, you cower, unsure of what to do. Taro, where are you? Oh no. Wait. This isn't good. The door of the to the studio buckles, splitting open as the monster Taro bursts into the room. With a triumphant mouth, she whirls around and shields her human. I am... Okay, this... Okay, Taro, you're not as bad, but you're still pretty bad. Paws off, pal! Taro! Oh my gosh, I thought you were up here! <laughs> so how do you get so, so how would you get so big? Oh god, I can't speak. You throw out your arms and give the cat's a spirit the cat spirit a big hug. Then Taro for and Taro's for bristles in response. Go tug. When my human's in trouble, I take on my this much more effective form. I, I can't really do voices for all of these characters. I'm sorry, everyone listening, watching this, but I can't do voices. The only voice is this one from Madhouse Mike. Fun, isn't it? Aw, oh, that's so weird. <laughs> sorry to keep you waiting. I, I, I don't do voice acting. I've got a bellyache. There was Muse. Muse Weekly. No more discount scoops, sushi, okay? Don't ask for it. We are in the middle of something <laughs> this is all very touching but i'm on tight schedule here the green amalgamation jewels his words groveled in this more twisted form i suppose we ought to reschedule with your producer then <laughs> jamie hisses through their clenched teeth i wouldn't mind speaking with your upper management Lake shudders and his eyes go, go wide, shaking with an otherworldly rage. Screw management! You freaks are just like them! 
You know, okay, so all of this is cool and all, but I'm just subconsciously, like, of all the characters, I don't care about Bob, Jamie, you know, Madhouse, or Taro. It's just Atlas. Is Atlas dead? Permanently? Don't tell me he is. Don't tell me he is. Don't tell me he is. I'm a celebrity. <laughs> I'm a celebrity. I'm a local legend. I'm a freaking demon. Not technically. I'm gonna make you all pay! Quit exclamation mark. You're frozen with fear. Gawking at the frenzied demon before you. Mike's glazed over. Hungry eyes connect with your petrified gaze and he sneers. Starting with you, little human. Oh no. Madhouse makes a stand. Jamie takes a moment to wake up. The Mothman with a gentle shake. Atlas, wake up. Jamie pokes him with the tip of their tail. Alice coughs up a mouthful of ectoplasm and groans. Uh, I ate this timeline. Yeah, same here, Alice. I do too. I should not have left you alone. Jamie offers Alice a hand and helps him up to his feet. It's fine. I should have seen this coming. This is... Okay, like, on a side note, this is some very classy music. And we just have the Avengers here, and I'm about to die, but we... Uh, sorry for sending you a place back there. Army Breakfast and Raven. About that, Mike is trying to kill us all. Yeah, that sounds normal. Oh, that's nice. Sparkle. Great. I have just the thing for this. Are you okay, Atlas? Who will act? No, okay. So Taro has the most health, so Taro's gonna be our tank. I am just going to survive. Jamie is our DPS, and Atlas is our support. I am just that one cheerleader. I'm gonna go with Atlas. Atlas coughs up more ectoplasm. Use a potion. Reaching into his feathery fluff, Alice pulls out a single vial of a mysterious liquid and pops off the cork. He then gives it to... Bob? Uncorking the potion, Alice splashes the... <laughs> splashes Pop face. Bob's Bob in the face, leaving them confused and annoyed, but massively healed. Hmm. I wonder what this will do. Who will act? Now we go with Jamie. Jamie shifts th their weight. Their tail's swishing in time. Bolt of fire. Oh, you know I'm gonna re-roll for this if it goes bad. Yes! Ha! Get fiocked, Mike. Success. Ruffle difficulty, six. I got an eight, again. Swiping their hand through the air, Jamie unleashes a raging bolt of blue hellfire. The enemy is engulfed in pale blue light and takes a hefty four damage. Okay. Manhouse is preparing to attack. Oh no. Preparing to attack. Listen, so... Taro, you're the tank. I need you to take as much damage as possible. Taro slams her belly. Catnap. Closing her eyes. Taro drifts us into a dreamland for a bit. Taro's next roll has a plus two bonus. Oh yes. Oh no. Madhouse looks at Alice and slashes his claws through the air. This is for the fans! Oh. Oh, failure. Roll difficulty 7. You Would would you like to re-roll? I don't know how much damage this will do, so I'm going to re-roll. I pray. <sighs> failure. Okay. I have to save up the rolls. 
Alice takes a heavy hit, losing a fistful of feathers and taking five damage. Gah! Not cool. Oh. Who will act? God, this is actually kind of cool. Um, Bob. You get a grip on the situation, it's a lot to process. Cat shield! Ducking beneath her, you feel safe among the fe feline's fluff. You will be shielded by Madhouse's next attack. Howard's attack has been increased by one. A. Hey, who will act? Atlas. Wait, Taro, yes. Taro slams her belly. Pounce. Now it has a plus two on this, so it should pass. Hopefully. Success. Yeah, baby. Success. Roll difficulty. Five. The ghost rears back and pounces. Scratching Mike across the face, dealing six damage. Class. Mass is preparing to attack. Jamie, your go. Okay. Jamie exhales a gout of steam. Use healing magic, please. Oh, goddammit. Long difficulty, eight. Uh, I have to. I need to make sure Atlas doesn't die. No. Don't. Don't kill Atlas. Jamie closes her eyes, trying to concentrate. I, I can't do this. They growl, unable to focus on any further. Mattis looks at Taro and slashes his claws through the air. This is for the fans! Oh, please. Please. Oh god, these are all bad rolls. <sighs> Taro wins as she takes three damage. Get wrecked. Wow, jeez. Mike soups hefty, soups a hef hello. Mike scoops a hefty effects wreck off, and the door slams against the wall. Sparks Sharon from the electrical carnage. This is for my freedom. Oh God! Success. Roll difficulty seven. Jamie shields their face from the sparks and broken parts, taking no damage. Uh, this is getting excited. Taro. Taro demands his engine. Stat. Tom. Your hat is more personality than you. <laughs> Psh, nice try, but I'm not that easy. A single tear rolls down Malahas's cheek. Malahas' difficulty rating has decreased. Oh, get noobed. Malahas is getting excited. Uh, Jamie, I'm gonna let you take the next hot uh, shot. Oh, wait, what? Jamie reaches up and pats, and pats the wisp atop their head. Use fire. Good. Success. Roll difficulty. Five. Swiping their hand through the air, Jamie unleashes a raging bolt of fire. Blue hellfire. The demon is engulfed in pale blue light and takes a hefty four damage. As is preparing to attack. Bob, you brace yourself for the worst. Cheer. Hang in there. The next attack will do more damage. Mike scoops up a hefty, scoops the, scoops up a hefty effects rack off, and the door off the floor and slams it against the wall. Sparks Sharon from the electrical carnage. This is from my freedom. Success. Roll difficulty five. Get noob. Alice steps back as the hit completely whiffs, shattering against the ground, grimacing. At the collateral damage. Hope you have yeah, hope you have insurance. Alice looks at Jamie and slashes his claw through the air. This is from the fans. Oh, Madhouse, we are presumably winning. <laughs> now we're getting all the good rolls. Yay. Jamie takes a step back, unfazed by the attack. Alice is getting excited. Taro, your move. Tarot Dames dreams, daydreams about ghost sushi. Pounce. I believe this is either one. I believe this will do more damage. I have poor memory. Success. Roll difficulty. Six. So, just barely. Tarot leaps up and scratches Mike for seven damage. Madhouse looks, Madhouse looks desperate. Alright, Atlas, your move. Atlas daydreams about having a raven familiar. Throw something. Yes. <laughs> Throw something, you fricker. No. Okay, I'm going to reroll. I'm I'm determined to get this one. 
Yes! Success. Roll difficulty. Six. Reaching into his neck, Fluff, Alice digs a claw around and pulls out a stick of iron. Why does he have a stick of iron? We will never know. He then balls up his feathery fists and flings the object at the phantom. Guess this will work. The phantom soars through the air and perfectly falls on the mic's open mouth. The phantom gags and coughs hard, taking five damage. Atlas gives himself a high five. Very nice. Did y'all see that? Madhouse's difficulty rating has been decreased. Madhouse is preparing to attack. Oh boy. Now, Taro is... Okay, so Taro is like the best person here, so... Taro date dreams about ghost, ghost sushi. Pounce. Success. Roll difficulty. Five. Taro leaps up and scratches Mike for five damage. Oh. Yeah. You're the real deal, huh? Huh. Huh. Yes, that's a wrap, folks. I mean, I know he said that, but I'm doing it myself. Ghost form flickers, madhouse crumbling to the floor in an ectoplasmic heap. Let us finish this. Jamie steps forward, fire roaring, roaring from their eyes. You just listen to me! Ow! I still love questions! You take it. Take a hold of Jamie's arm and trying to hold them back. Okay. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm on a level with you. Bob, you're an idiot. This ghost tried to kill us. Let Jamie finish the job. Are you listening to Is me? that all you really care about? After all this time, you're still clueless. Snapping back, Mike musters up the last bit of strength he has to attempt to latch onto you. Don't you dare. You're coming with me! No, Bob, you idiot. Staring away, you blink. You blink spots from your vision, feeling oddly light. What is this place? Your furrow eyebrows and You furrow your eyebrows and shield your face from the pale white light. A green figure stands out in the harsh, empty space. It's Mike, just lying there and twiddling his thumbs. Ah! You're finally awake. Okay. I don't know what I'm gonna do with that. I mean, yeah, you're all alone now, trapped in the void with me. Aw, oh, he's dumb. The void? Question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark. You mean, like, we're ghosts chill out? Sorta? It's seen as a door between the smart and material world. Don't worry about it. Now stop talking, give me your soul. Can you answer my questions first? <laughs> I like how Bob is just so determined just to get a few answers out of him. Like, it's idiotic that they want to, you know, get questions and lose their soul, but here we are. You close your eyes with a heavy sigh, but Mike scowls, folding his arms with a sneer. Ah, no way. Awkward silence. Okay. And I'm gonna go. Wait, you can't just leave? Now we're supposed to do it to the death. Mike flings his arms wildly, floating alongside you as you walk in a place. Walking to nowhere. I can't. You continue to walk forward, wandering around this empty space. But I need you as a vessel to escape. Don't you feel bad for me? Come on, you've seen the movie, you know how this ends. I can tell you whatever you want. Oh no. Punch him, punch off his hat. Ends his afterlife with your fist. Oh, so we just have varying degrees of punching him. So, just a standard punch, punch off his hat, or kill him. Hmm. You know, I don't like a stupid hat, but I also don't like him being alive. Alright, you know what? Okay, I have a few coins on my desk. I'm gonna use this. No, I have two pair. Of, I have two dies. So one through four will be kill him. Um, five through eight will be punch off his hat, and the rest will just be punch him.
that's uh, five, that's a uh, seven. So, guess I get to punch off his stupid hat at long last. You ball up your fists and shift your weight from your heels to your toes and take a step forward. We squeezing your eyes shut. You throw your fist forward and it connects, knocking off Mike's hat. Mike gasps for his baseball cap and keeps it firmly planted onto his head. Yeah, you're an asshole. Yeah, yeah, you're figuring this out now. You're figuring this out now. It took you an entire battle sequence and you didn't figure it out. Are you? Okay, listen, Bob. You, you are. You, you have good intentions in mind, but you're also a bit of a dimwit. I will say that much. Ah, oh, my nose. How do you even touch me? Mike brings his hand to his face, feeling an empty space where he knew it would be. You dragged me into this hell dimension and newsflash, we're both ghosts. You throw your arms over your head, gesturing around to the empty vacuum of space. Of course I feel bad for you, Mike, but uh, you didn't deserve to die, but let alone become a monster, but uh, you know... You're, you're just being, you're acting like one, you're just being a total jackass, so I feel no, I feel no remorse for you, and I'll punch off your head as I see fit. Like a stunned, unsure what to say. Get noob. So if you're going to eat my soul, you might as well do it already. Gladly. The phantom backs off. Oh, God. Is, is it living up to the name of the game? Also, God, this is... Okay. Okay. This is not going to... I'm gonna make this into three separate videos to be more congestible. Or two. I can't do this. Why not? I don't want to eat you. I shouldn't have put you through this. I just... Don't know what to do else to do. I want to escape it. What if I up and spear? Oh, I'm absolutely not the way out of this job. I can't remember my own face. Mike tips his hat down and covers his eyes. Oh god. You're not going to disappear. If you really want to first start, you can start a podcast. It's like a radio show that you carry in your pocket. On your cell phone. Mike perks up, a slight twinkle in his dead eyes. Oh god. You take out your phone, only to realize it's back in the material world. And um, I'll show you later, even if you're jackass. Heh, <laughs> I'll look forward to it. If it means anything, I think you're worth more than this crusty old radio station. The ghost shudders and brings a claw to his face, wiping his eyes. All. I kind of feel bad for him, but on the flip side, he nearly killed Atlas, and no one harms Atlas. He, the, <laughs> Mike hesitates for a moment before throwing his arms around here, giving you a big hug. This is very nice, very happy moment, yes, but Atlas, you do not harm him. Thanks for not giving up on me. Hey, I don't have to do the voice line for that one. You should be proud of your work, Mike. It's not. And as a narrator, I can say that this is very awkward. You'd better go. This place gives me the creeps. And with that, we are back in the material world. As the two of you are drowning in life, you swear you capture guns of the phantom's old face. His expression determined in his eyes full of life. Yeah. This is all your fault. How is it my fault? Oh god. Mortals truly never change. <laughs> you knew bringing a human here was dangerous. Says the ghost gobbling demon. Ah, uh, alright. Dara, where the hell were you? Tch, who cares? I was there to protect Bob, and that's what matters. Oh god. You did the bare minimum. Oh, this is just. I'll bite your tongue. You know, this is just beautiful. Because it's, they're arguing about the fact that I'm dead. I know everything.
everything would work out. Stop lying to yourself, Atlas. But I can really see the future. Improve it, mothball. Oh. Uh, I am in pain. Pain. Shush. Look, Bob is waking up. <laughs> oh, that was just a beautiful argument. So that's what happened to the place. We, uh... Destroyed it. Um, they all look very angry and want to kill each other. Normal day. You know. uh, this is my day. Uh, I have a day. I guess I feel terrible. Am I dead? Nope. Unless we're all ghosts. <laughs> I like how casually Alice does that. Alice leaps into your arms, nuzzling against your neck and purrs. Being a cat, as usual. Fat and a cat. That's my human. God, I need something in the voice. That's, uh, Madhouse Mike only. More importantly, I do not sense the presence of that loathsome ghost. Jamie lets out a sigh of relief. Yeah, let's get the heck out of here. Alice still looks a little freezed and roughed up from the whole position thing. And honestly, I can't blame him. You don't respond, the lump. Forming in the back of your throat. Ain't that something? I also realized that, uh. Wait. Okay, no, audio is still normal. I, I just realized, though, that I'm not going to be able to make this into several videos because of, uh. audio reasons? Maybe not, who knows. Um, either way, this is quite the thing. And with that, we are saving. Quite the thing. Uh... Oh boy. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I'm probably going to split it into two parts, because I don't want to make two... Now we're log up said the processing will take three decades. This is gonna take forever as well, but either way. I hope you enjoyed. I sure as hell did, and I'm gonna make a third part, no matter what the comments say. Uh have a wonderful good day, guys, and I'm out. Bye-bye. <laughs>